Welcome to On Deck with the Cats, the official show of the Katuit Ketaliers, taking you through everything happening around Lowell Park and all throughout the village. Now here's your Katuit media team for this episode of On Deck with the Cats. Welcome back to another episode of On Deck with the Cats. I'm Joe Pratt, joined with Tyler Danberg and Lily Butler. Our guest today was a member of the 2021 Katua Cataliers team. He's now in the Baltimore Orioles organization after three seasons at Pomona Pitzer. Uh, you may also remember him from the Great Britain national team during the World Baseball Classic. Please welcome Ryan Long. Ryan, how are you doing today? Doing great. Thank you all for having me on. Really, really excited to be here and uh, talking about and the we'll... experience here and, with, uh, and out on the cave with you all. Awesome. And we'll bring in our other broadcasters as well. Let's start with Tyler. Tyler, how you doing? Doing great, Joe. We've got a great guest today. Looking forward to talking to Ryan. And of course, Lily Butler, our sideline reporter is here. Lily? Doing good, Joe. Excited to talk some baseball and excited to be closer to the summer season. So that's all great. Let's get right into it, though. Ryan, it's been a very eventful month or two that you've had recently. Just what has life been like post WBC and what are you doing right now? Yeah, it's been a very uh, surreal month or so. Uh, showing up in early February to spring training, uh, you know, getting ready faster than ever before, knowing that the WBC is coming up obviously having that experience and then coming right back and being back on the backfields out here in Sarasota. <laughs> um, it's been a bit of a, a emotional roller coaster in terms of the baseball experience, but it's been a, it's been an amazing month. Um, right now I'm still down in Sarasota uh, at spring training with the Orioles, um, getting ready for the season, which starts here in about a week. What has the readjustment been like? back with the Orioles organization back in Sarasota where you've got a quick turnaround coming from the WBC. Yeah, we, you know, me and my teammates uh, out of the WBC, we were all talking how, you know, it would be an interesting shift going from throwing in, you know, Chase Field for the first time ever to going back out to backfield four, uh, thrown against, <laughs> thrown against our own guys. Uh, so it, it was definitely a, uh, a shift in, in, you know, frame of mind and, you know, the emotion that you pitch with, but um, the Orioles have been great about it. Um, they were fully supportive the whole time. They were, you know, really on board with it. And, you know, they've been nothing but excited for me since I've come back. Speaking of excitement and the WBC, um, describe that feeling beforehand when you were pitching, seeing Mike Trout across the mound and then, what was that feeling like after striking him out? Yeah, it was pretty unbelievable. The whole, the whole experience itself was, um, I I've never pitched at a big league field before, um, you know, in front of that many people, not, not even close. So just being there for the intros and being out in the bullpen before I got in the game, it was, it was pretty surreal. I just looked around the stadium and taking it all in. Um, the pitching itself was, was, and, you know, like you mentioned when trout came up in the box and I had that experience, uh, <laughs> you know, it was, it was pretty hard to believe. Uh, and I don't think I comprehended it for the next couple of innings after I came out of that. So yeah, it was, uh, it was definitely a moment that I'll never forget. Um, a part of my baseball journey that, you know, will be a high up there, if not at the top of things I will remember. And going ba basically more off that, you had two appearances in the WBC. They were both kind of close game, middle relief or long relief kind of middle of the game scenarios. Was there another time possibly in your career that maybe prepared you for high pressure scenarios like that? The 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 closest thing uh, is being out playing summer ball with 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 the cats. Um, I've never really come out of the pen. Besides that, um, I actually only had a couple times where I did that, um, but that really did help. Um, I think we were playing 
uh, at Wareham, and I came out of the pen um, in a pretty close game, and that was probably the closest experience I've actually had to, you know, coming out of the pen in a high pressure situation because my whole life I've been a starter. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty used to that routine last year. I relieved a little bit, but with the Orioles, we, we do like a second starter. So you kind of know, you're going to pitch, um, you know, you're going to come in the game, but, um, you know, the summer of 21, I, I was in a, a few different roles and I was able to come out of the pen in, in a couple games. And I think, I think that was probably the closest I've, I've ever had to, to that, I guess, type of role. Um, but it definitely did help. Is there any change in approach? between coming out of the bullpen and the way you approach a start? I think once you get on the mound, it's pretty similar, um, but it's the lead up to it. I mean, with a start, you know what time you're going to pitch pretty much. You can engineer your routine down to the minute. And I'm a pretty scheduled guy, so that naturally helped me, and I like that. When you're a reliever and you don't really know exactly when you're going to come in a game, it's a lot more on your toes, getting yourself ready for getting warmed up whenever, right? Being ready to go when they call your name. Um, so it definitely is different. The prep is, is certainly different, but at the same time, the energy that you have going into the game, at least for me, when you're coming out of the bullpen is kind of unmatched, right? As a starter, you're pretty composed. Like it, like you, you know, that first pitch is going to be at this time out of the bullpen, you're, you're pretty juiced up on that energy. So, so that definitely is, is different in terms of the prep. Um, but, but like I said, once you get out there, it's, you know, you're still thrown, thrown to the same, same guy with, a, with, with the hitter at the plate. So, uh, you know, that, that makes it a little bit simpler. So in general, Ryan, how would you explain yourself or describe yourself as a pitcher? I would say I'm a very, I guess I would I would I would describe myself as a as a thinker on the mound. Um, you know, I I definitely think a lot. Um, you know, before the game, during the game, um, I, I'm not pitching with maybe as high of energy as someone else, or you know, relying on emotion as as much. Um, I feel like I'm I'm best when I really slow try and slow the game down and analyze the situation be really confident in the pitch I'm throwing know what pitch I'm going to throw you know knowing my reports to each of the hitters um so I think I'm pretty calculated um and also I'd consider myself pretty crafty I guess would be the right word I, I I'm not entirely sure if that perfectly describes it but again I'm trying to always offset the timing of hitters, making sure I'm keeping them off balance, doing different windups sometimes here and there, um, you know, different hold times. I try and use whatever I can, you know, to my advantage when I pitch. So, so, so that, that's pretty much how I would describe myself. Anybody that you kind of model your, uh, your craftiness or deception on the mound? I take a lot of different things in. Um, <laughs> I remember when I was in the Cape, uh, I was watching with my, my host dad, Jason, we were watching Nestor Cortez of the Yankees pitch and he has all these wacky windups that he does and you know moving around all the time and uh, that was the point you know I'd always been doing different windups but that was the point I started to watch him a little bit more um, and he's a very different pitcher than I am he's a you know he's 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 a lefty throws from different arm angles and I'm a tall righty um, but at the same time he's really effective with it and so I was like I, I I might as well take some things from this game see what I can use and I don't go cry to quite as uh, unique with my legless as he might, but, um, you know, I feel like I learned a lot from, from, from watching him. Um, that's probably where I take that sort that aspect of it from, um, in terms of like the rest of my game, I like watching Shane Bieber of the, uh, the guardians a lot. Um, I feel like he just commands the zone really, really well. So I take inspiration from him as well. Oh, I know Tyler, the guardians fan loves that, that answer, Ryan. And going back to your Katua days a little bit there, and Mike Roberts really is a guy who can push guys out of their comfort zone a lot, which obviously kind of helps players grow a lot. And you talking about how you're mainly a starting pitcher guy growing up. And when you were on the Cape, you started only half of your games, half of your appearances were in relief. What was that like pitching outside of your comfort zone? And what sort of challenges did Mike Roberts bring upon you? Yeah, well, I mean, Coach Robert was, you know, and 
amazing influence on on my uh, my entire baseball. A, uh, I, I was on a temp contract when I got there. I didn't really, you know, know if I was going to stay on the team. It was one of those, you know, trying to earn every single day that I was there. Um, but he still trusted me to start one of our first games. He he he, you know, said, "Hey, go out and do it." Like, you know, I didn't actually started at all that year because my my college didn't play. But you know, he saw saw that I could pitch, and he he let me go do that and have two games where I, I got to start, um, and that was really really cool. Um, after that, it was one of those things where I think one of my starts got rained out, um, and he wanted to keep me keep me active and wanted to keep me throwing. And uh, you know, he asked me if I could <laughs> throw out of the bullpen, and I said, you know, I haven't done it much, but but I I'd love to. And, you know, that day I was the first guy out of the bullpen. So, you know, it meant a lot that he was able to trust me, um, know that I could come into the games and, you know, give it my best. Um, and yeah, that, that definitely helps a ton um, being able to pitch in different roles in, in games that felt like they really mattered a lot. Um, learning from lots of guys on that, on that staff who, you know, went to big schools and had lots of experience pitching in high leverage situations um, that summer certainly helped me be able to feel comfortable coming in in different spots in the game. Uh, I, I think that, that, that helped me a ton this past year and this, you know, this past month. So you didn't pitch that spring of 2021 season. Was that because they didn't have the season due to COVID? Yeah, exactly. So my school was in LA County and LA County uh, didn't have any, uh, D3 sports that year so yeah I actually didn't I didn't pitch at all my first pitches of the year were thrown out that summer so I, I took about I'd, I'd been off for a, over a year and a half about so yeah and how spe so how special was that summer in 2021 getting to pitch at Lowell Park I mean it was it was special for so many different reasons I mean I guess in terms of the not being able to you know pitch beforehand I I built up my whole year to be able to pitch there. That was, that was, that was the season for me. Um, so it was, it was really special to be able to be out in an environment like that with, with fans like we had, um, you know, it, it was really, really special. Um, and I felt that added sense of, you know, wanting to do as well as I could, um, you know, be at my, at my highest level, just because I hadn't, hadn't thrown much that year. So, so that was really, really important um, and, and really special. You know, the, the whole experience out there, you know, I was, I was only there for a month, but I felt like I had a lot more than a month of a life experience under, the, under my belt by the time that was over. Um, you know, I had an amazing host family with uh, Sarah and Jason and their kids, uh, Leo and Liza. So uh, that was a huge part of it. Um, I think the camps that we worked in the morning, uh, getting to interact with the with with all the kids in the area that was a great part of the experience and then you know importantly the baseball itself was extremely high level it was an amazing environment a place that i would never you know an environment that i'd never pitched in before so in total that that whole experience was was really really uh unbelievable and ryan you mentioned earlier being one of the taller pitchers talking about Nestor Cortez. You're not more of a Nestor Cortez. You're more of a taller six foot six right-hander. How has that helped you in kind of growing up? When did you have major growth spurts where you kind of made major strides as a pitcher? Did that happen at all? Yeah. Yeah. Well, in terms of my, in terms of my height, I was kind of one of those guys that just, kind of kept taking up every year and some at one point I I just became taller than in terms of my strides as a as as a pitcher um I think that really came my sophomore and junior years of college so that would be 2019 2020 um I started training at driveline baseball I'm I'm from the Seattle area and that facility out there um, I, I started really going to a lot more and, you know, buying into the, the weighted ball program. And, you know, I saw a lot of velo jumps. I saw improvements in all my off speed. And uh, I, I would really say that that was what led me to become a much higher level pitcher. Um, beyond that, I think that the experience I had in the Cape really took me to a whole nother level, being able to face hitters, um, you know, from some of the best schools across the country and, and, 
really figure out how all my stuff place against them. Um, that, that was the next step I feel like in my development and, and that helped me immensely. Going back um, to your time in Kintuit, but a little bit away from baseball, what was one of your favorite memories in general um, during that summer? And then also you mentioned your host family. Did you have any favorite memories with your host family? Yeah, I'll, I'll start with that one. Um, I think my, my favorite memories with, I, I guess not just one, but with, with my host family, um, we, we were out in Marston Mills and, uh, every, every night after the games, uh, at their house, a lot of the neighbors would be over and, uh, me and my, me and my host brother, uh, we would come back and we would just, uh, we'd play darts every, every night, uh, with our host dad and, and everyone would be out there. All the kids would be out there throwing darts too. And we got really into it. We would, uh, we would play very competitive games, uh, um, you know, we got a lot better throughout the summer, uh, but I thought that atmosphere was awesome. Music would be, would be going, um, like I said, all, all the neighbors would be over and it was just a very, very fun atmosphere to be in. Um, and, and a fun little, uh, a fun little game we had on the side too. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can single out one, one experience that I would say would be my favorite. I, I definitely remember the, one of our first days walking around, um, walking around like the grocery stores in the area, telling people telling everyone that the season's about to start handing out schedules and everything like that. Um, I, I, I have a teammate, Dylan Beavers, who's now with me with the Orioles, who always, uh, who always still, still makes fun of me for uh, just walking around and, you know, going up to people and saying, saying hi there and uh, trying to get them to, to come out to the games. But uh, I, I definitely, I definitely think that that was a, a pretty cool and unique experience, just really interacting with fans and local members in a, in, in a pretty, pretty direct way who had the head-to-head -head in darts you or your host brother yeah Amir will um I think it was pretty close our host dad Jason probably won um I don't know there were some games where I I beat Will and some some games that he uh he beat me so yeah it was uh it was pretty close I'd say and Tyler or excuse me, not Tyler. I'm gonna go with Ryan Long to ask this question. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to, and exit this podcast without asking you this question. Of course, for those listening, you may not sound like your average guy from Great Great Britain, but you're wearing the Great Britain sweatshirt and you competed for the team. We need to know what the relation is and how you kind of came about playing for those guys. You, you saying I don't sound British enough? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no, not at all. My, <laughs> my uh my mom was born out in uh out in england uh her parents are both from there they they grew up there um, my grandfather moved over to seattle uh, to become an aerospace engineer with boeing um and my mom moved over when she was young uh based on the wbc rules that makes me qualify well because i qualify for a uk passport and uk citizenship i can play for the team um, so yeah, it was, it was an unbelievable opportunity to be on the team. Um, I, I heard about the team when they were playing out in the qualifiers in Germany back in September. And, you know, I, I talked to my college coach and I was like, Hey, if there's any way I can play on this team. I, I would love to, do you know anyone? And, and he did, he knew the hitting coach, uh, got my name in there. And, you know, I found out in January that I was, you know, considering being, or I was considered for the team and found out a month later that I was on it. And, yeah, it was, it was an absolute honor to be on that team and, you know, be around the group of guys that, that we had. It was, it was a really special group and guys that were really committed to making not only the team better, but, you know, the standing of the sport across Great Britain. It was, it was really special to be part of that and, and, and aiming for a goal that was not just winning, but for expanding the game. So yeah, ab absolute honor and, so and something that I'll, I'll definitely, you know, hold very highly. Yeah, it was pretty cool seeing that classroom uh, celebrate your WBC teammate and Harry Ford. That was, that was pretty sweet. And, and I, I can't imagine, Ryan, the reaction from your family and then your mom's side of the family getting to see you go out and perform and represent the country. Yeah, it was, it was great. I mean, 
I don't think they, they know a ton about baseball, to be honest. Um, I was over there for a, a family trip back in early 2020 uh, in January. And I was, I was throwing like my plyo balls and, and, and other balls. <laughs> and, and in England, there's not like, you know, plyo walls or even concrete walls. It's, it's mostly like old brick. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I spent many an hour just trying to get my relatives to drive me around to find a place to throw my, my plyo balls. And, <laughs> and they were looking at me pretty sideways, but uh, I think after they were able to, you know, see me in this, they, they understood a little bit more about the sport and, you know, seemed, seemed very proud. You know, my, my mom and my, my grandma were, were very, very excited to see me out there wearing, wearing Great Britain across the, across the jersey. So, yeah, it was, uh, it was a really special moment for me and for, for all of them. And Brian, so moving forward, what's next for you in these next few weeks? Yeah, so spring training ends here uh, at the end of this week. Um, my affiliate season starts soon. Um, just getting going with that, getting back into the flow of things, uh, you know, trying to build off last year. I think last year was a really big year for for learning for me. I, I think I had some success and, and some some failures. And so, you know, just trying to compound on the things that I did well and, and build off them and, and kind of just see how this year goes and, you know, just – want to keep keep uh enjoying the whole thing and 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 making the most of the opportunity well we'll be sure to follow along every step of the way and maybe we'll have you over to katua this summer if you ever make the trip up we know you'll be busy with your season i know we'd love to have that happen but of course thank you for joining us that's all i have if you guys have any more questions you go ahead ask right now I'm good. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Ryan. And we're happy to have you up in the booth for an inning. Tell us about your summer so far. Uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you guys again for having me on. You know, I had a great experience out, out on the Cape and, you know, want to stay stay close with the team. I, I followed them last summer and I, I, I plan to do it again. Well, we are, of course, also looking forward to the 2020 three season as well. Ryan Long, thank you so much for joining us. Best of luck moving forward with your pitching career and in the Baltimore Orioles organization. That's going to do it for us on On Deck with the Kets. And be sure to keep up to date on all things Kettleers on our Instagram and Twitter, along with our website online. And we will see you next time.